I think back my worst ever performance was a really painful one because I, I was up against one of my real heroes. And and I'm, I'm often I'm very good at looking back and understanding and see the, the, uh, the certain events and things that took place that led, that led this catastrophic day. And for me, it felt catastrophic. So it starts with I'm getting off... Starts with me jumping off, getting off the plane after the World Cup in 1995, landing back at Mascot. We'd had a good World Cup. I'd had a breakout year in 95. And I'll be just perfectly honest to you, I thought I was better than I was. Mm. So I was a player. I never had Andrew's talent. I never had Brad Fittler's talent or any of those players. I survived and was able to compete at the level of hard work and discipline. Yeah. Mm. So I get off the plane and, I, and I've just – man, I've, ca- I've got carried away with myself. I was big head. Right, mm. so I, you did win the World Cup, but yeah, I didn't get off. <laughs> I didn't get on the field. <laughs> no, I you still won. You got yeah, a medal. I, I got a medal. Yeah, but we uh, first mistake: turn up at training, pre-season training late. Now, I pro- whenever I finished a season, I'd have two weeks off, and I'd go back to prepare for the first day of training. Mm. You know. I'd have a month preparation, so I turned up the first day and I was ready to go. And oftentimes I'd sit there and go through the tape and work out new plays and different ways to do things. So I turn up, you know, I'm drinking, do whatever. I'm hardly thinking about the game like you, you, mm. like about my football, like you said, block yeah. that one game. And I get back to pre-season. I'm carrying a bit of timber. I'm a little bit overweight. And I'm just going, mate, I'm sweet. And there's little, there's little signs, but I'm just taking – no notice of him because, mate, I'll just turn on the field and, sw- you know, yeah. turn on the tap and I'll be sweet. So what happens is we um, play round one against the Western Reds. Mate, we fluke the win. We fluke it. They were so much better than us. We scored at the last minute and we beat them. I'd, I'd been very average, but I got, they gave me man of the match. And as I'm walking over hey, and giving me man going, what? I, I've got <laughs> – I have block. Yeah. But then I say to myself – Fucking hell, I can play a lot better than that. How good am I going? <laughs> second round. He's in trouble here. And, uh, that's yeah. second mistake. Yeah. Th- the third mistake is we play St. George at Cogra. And at one point in the game with 20 to go, they're, they're losing us 30 points to four. But then we put a massive surge on at the end of the game. They just hang on, 30 to 28. Another two minutes we win the football game. Rather than us going off and, and me going off and focusing on things that they beat us 30 to 4, I'm focusing on the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, mate, set up a couple of tries. Mm. You know, almost knocked them over. Mm. We're in good shape. Mm. So we're heading into round three. We're playing the Tigers at home. It's going to be a big game. And I'm playing directly opposite Ellery Hanley. Ellery's come back from Balmain as sort of his, his last second, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's playing, he's playing six. So I'm all excited and I go in, we go into the video session leading into the game. And Malcolm really goes – Malcolm and Warren uh, – Malcolm and, and Ellery hadn't got on. So Malcolm was really determined that was a Ellery wasn't going to make an impact. Yeah. And he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. Ellery's he's very, very strong, stronger than you think, and he's quick and he moves his way. So, Matty, I reckon from scrums we'll put Mark Glanville at six and you pack into the scrum. And, mate, I blew up. Mm. For me, that was... I it's thought, like you can't handle him. Yeah, I can't handle him. Yeah. And, and shame, I felt shamed. Yeah. You know, I, I felt like... And I was like, mate, I compete with him. I've been playing for Australia. You know, yeah. you've, done, you, you've forgotten how good I am. Yeah. So that's another mistake. The next one just shows where my head is. The night before the game, what I used to do, I'd always have steak and pasta, have an early night or sit and watch Friday Night Football with my legs up and just relax. We'd, me and Trish, I'd say, mate, let's go out for dinner, right? So we go go out for dinner. Of all places to go for dinner, <laughs> I go to a Mexican restaurant. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> and I have means, the, and I have, I have the prawn fajitas. <laughs> oh, <dear>. oh, no. <laughs> so, mate, you, that's where you go, where's your head at? So that's the next mistake. So we turn up at game day. In the warm-up, I'm just feeling a little bit off kilter, just a little bit. But so I, you, you, were, you started to recognise it then? I started to recognise it. What, the beans were coming good? Or? Yeah, that, well, <laughs> I, was, I tell you what it was. It was an effort. Mm. Warm up was an effort. Mm. The ball wasn't hitting my hands like it usually does, and there was just lots. Of, and I, I, I said, "I was," mm. but I'm convinced oh, I'll be okay. Mm. So we get out in the field, and we used to we used to have 
I learned after this game we had a couple of calls that, that were problematic. One was we call a thing called a double, which I'd get the football and my back rower and centre would be together, joined together the last second. The back row would go in, centre would go out. Yeah, right. That was one of my favourite plays. But also we had a play called the double next where I'd go bang, come across, one bloke would drop under me, give it to the second man under it. So I got my men on outside me and I'll say double on the next play. Uh. And they think... I've called double next. Now, yeah. later on, we went, yeah. oh, there's a mistake here. So we changed the double shape to a sharp. Mm. So I catch the ball and I go to throw it to the centre and they're trying to drop under me. Ball rolls over the sideline. Mm. From that scrum, I'm Mark and Ellery. And Mark Lenville comes up to me and says, mate, do you want me to get there? And I say, mate, please. Yeah. Mm. So I'm Mark and Ellery. He gets the football and he comes at me. And at the last second, he does his trademark push away and goes whooshka and mm. gets rid of me. Mm. And I can almost hear Malcolm really go, stupid f. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I felt I it. Told yeah. you. And from <laughs> that moment, yeah. like, and I remember when Ellery did it, he got up and, and he turned to me and he sort of smirked. Yeah. And I was really embarrassed. Yeah. And from there, the, the greatest mistake was I chased the game. I kept trying to chase and I'm trying to come up with big plays to sort of redeem it and the hole just got deeper and deeper and deeper. We actually got ourselves back to be four points within, uh, within, within the Tigers and there's about 15 minutes to go and I've got the ball and I'm thinking here's my moment and I sense something and I go for the big long double cutout which I thought was on. I get picked off, intercept, they go the distance and score. Oh, no. What are you thinking then? Mate, I'm... You're in the hole. Uh, when you get, get your when, own shovel. As a playmaker, when you get an intercept yeah. from one end to the other, it's really bad because you've got to walk all the way back <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you're copping it. And as I get behind the line and I'm about to say to the boys, come on, sorry, we can, st- we can still win this, the trainer comes on and says, Matty, you're off. Oh, that's the worst. And I'm not ashamed. I am, actually, I am ashamed to say that I went off and afterwards I got asked, yeah, hell, what? And instead of saying, mate, I was just really poor, mm. I went, yeah, I went last night and I had a feed at a Mexican restaurant and I think I got a little bit of food poor. Oh, right, I yeah. The excuse. excuse. Yeah, Let me that's ask, the excuse. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Right, so there's a lot of things happening in there that you're – that are, are negative to your performance mm. that you're not aware of, yeah. Okay. But when you're in the in the warm up and suddenly the ball's not hitting your hands like it does, like it should, it's not feeling right, and you're suddenly going, "Well, hang on, things aren't quite right." And then you're in the game mm. and things, and it's it's happened to everybody. You just get in some days yep. and it just it's just not working. Yep. Once you recognise it, how do you then say to yourself, okay, I need to recalibrate here mm. and I need to get it? Like, are you able to pull out in, in, yep. in that game and say to yourself, okay, yep. like, do you need, like, because I know, like, it's, from a yes. from a writing point of view, when yep. I'm sitting there and I'm just swimming, I get up, walk away, and I, I, I'll, 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 go and read, I'll go and read something yep. to yes, just take my train of thought. To, t- to change yeah. my train of thought so then when I come back, I've got fresh eyes. It's interesting you say that because what I learnt from that game, Kenty, was how to build firewalls around my game. That's what it taught me. Yeah. So that if the ball, and I say this to as young playmakers, if the ball ain't hitting your hands like it should, if you're just not feeling smooth, if you're just not seeing things, take a step back, feed the players on the outside earlier and just play simple plays. Mm. Kick well. Defend well, and that's all you've got to do. Don't chase yeah, don't the game. Ever do it, it's yeah. like, and, and that's why I, I built things in my game. That taught me, that gave me the realisation and reminded me of what I was really about. I was about hard work and discipline. That's what I was, and I just let that go. I'd abandon that. You're trying so, to finesse your way through. I just thought I was better than what I was. Yeah. I thought I was. I, I forgot that. I thought my birth certificate was Andrew John. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that, like that's telling though. That, it like, is like to, to be able to one recognise, but to, it's very difficult when you're in a certain train of thought mm. to be able to pull yourself out of it. Yeah. And, well, and adjust. Let's talk about Steve War there. Steve War was going through a horrible run of outs and got dropped from the Australian side and Mark replaced him. And what Steve Ward did from there, he built firewalls around his game. Mm. He no longer hooked. Hooked. Yeah. Was that the seven? Did he Did he get done seven in a row or something? He was, there was, was a long couple. Yeah, it was, was Chappell. Chappell, was it? But he had a real bad run. So, so 
Steve will know like hook. The hook shot. So hook. he's so Stop he hook. knew he knew what his shortcomings were. Like Mark was the most beautiful player you ever saw. Yeah. Steve was a fighter yeah. who tried to then probably in some ways trying awesome. to compete with Mark. Steve was a bit of a swashbuckler earlier. Like yeah, but Steve came into first came into the Australian team in the one day, so he actually came in as the bowler. Remember he saw his bowl the fiftieth yep, over. That's right. Yep. He, he was actually the bowler, but then but it, as you said, he was he, both the wars was a bit of a swashbuckler in, in uh, with yeah. the bat, but the hook shot kept getting him out. In the end, he just he abandoned never, it. Never hit it. Yeah. Again. Yeah. 